Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. How many times have you seen this diagram on a Flat Earth video? This is the supposed drop in Earth curve at eight inches per mile squared. So let's go ahead and do the definitive video on the eight inches per mile squared controversy. Now my pen decided to have a seizure today, so all these little ink splotches will just add to the hominess of the presentation. So say that you are on the surface of a sphere at this point right here. We'll call this point A. And you want to find the drop in Earth curve to another point, we'll call it B, that's over here. And what you're trying to solve for is that drop. Well, how do we do that? So first of all, if this is the center of the sphere, we'll call that C. This length right here would be the radius of the sphere. Now this is the drop. It's equal to the radius minus this segment right here. We've got a couple of different angles here. First of all, let's have a look at this one. We'll call this angle alpha. And this is the distance along the surface of the sphere between A and B. Well, how far is that? How many degrees would it be? Well, it depends on the unit of measurement that you're using. If it's statute miles, one degree equals 69 statute miles on Earth. If it's nautical miles, it's one every 60 nautical miles. And if it's kilometers, it's one every 111 kilometers. So our first step will be to figure out how far our distance is in degrees. Angle alpha equals the miles divided by 69 miles, nautical miles divided by 60 or kilometers, divided by 111 kilometers. Keep your units the same. We'll say the distance between A and B is 1,380 statute miles. We would take 1,380 miles, divide it by 69 miles, and that would give us 20 degrees. Now let's go back up to a diagram. What about this angle right here? We'll call this angle beta. Angle beta equals 90 minus angle alpha, because this is a right angle. So now we know what we're dealing with a little bit. Okay, so we've cleaned up our diagram a little bit. Let's do a little bit of basic trig here. So we've got angle alpha and we have angle beta, and we have this drop, and we have the radius of the circle or the sphere. How do we calculate what the drop is? Well, the drop is the radius minus this segment right here. Well, what's that segment? Now we recall from our unit circle in trigonometry, if this is radius r, then this would be the cosine, well, it'd be r times the cosine of angle beta, and this would be r times the sine of angle beta. So the drop would equal the radius minus the sine of beta times the radius. So getting back to our equation, notice that there's an r in both of these terms. So we can actually pull that out and make it r times 1 minus the sine of angle beta. Now, for 1,380 miles, or 20 degrees, our drop is going to be the radius of Earth, 3959 miles, times 1 minus the sine of 70 degrees. And that works out to 238.7583 miles. Well, how does that compare to 8 inches per mile squared? over 1,380 miles. Well, that would be 8 inches times 1,380 squared would be the amount of the drop in inches. We'd divide that by 12 and then divide it again by 5,280 to get the drop in miles. And at 8 inches per mile squared, it comes out to 240 miles, an error of only 2 miles. I don't know about you, but I find that pretty impressive. How far does it actually work for? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Well, being a man of precision, I decided to go ahead and calculate this for every distance from zero degrees all the way up to 90 degrees. So essentially, every drop that could be done, one degree at a time. So let's go have a look at a couple of them. Let's look at five degrees, which is 345 miles. According to eight inches per mile squared, we should have a drop of 15.0284 miles. The actual drop is 15.0656 miles. So again, a fraction of a mile off here. Well, what if we go out further? Let's go out to 10. That would be 60.1136 miles versus 60.1469 miles. Again, just a fraction of a percent. 20 degrees is the example that we use for 1,380 miles. It's 240.45 miles versus 238.76 miles. That's less than two miles difference on a total drop of 240 
miles. So I don't know about you, but I find this rather surprising. That's a pretty doggone good estimate. How far out can we take it? Well, I answered that question too. If you look on the bottom scale, all the way to the left, we have zero degrees, and all the way to the right, we have 90 degrees. The blue line represents a drop of eight inches per mile squared. The green line is the actual drop. Now what's very surprising about this is these lines are essentially the same all the way out to a distance of 40 degrees. Now what truly surprised me was how little that eight inches per mile square differed from the actual drop all the way out to 40 degrees from your location. That's not only 2,760 miles, it's around 4,400 kilometers, and you're only off by about 3.5%. In fact, if you go all the way down to 90 degrees away from your observer location, the maximum drop possible, you're only off by about 20%. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the math behind this 8 inches per mile square and see what we can learn from it. 8 inches per mile squared describes a parabola. Let's go ahead and go over that real quick. Now a parabola is essentially a mirrored curve. It starts at an origin, in this case we'll call that PQ, and it's described by this equation. Y equals A times X minus P squared plus Q. If we look at PQ as being the origin at 0, 0, these terms drop out and we're left with our 8 inches per mile squared. So Y would be drop equals A, 8 inches per mile squared. Pretty straightforward. Well, what is this A? This is called the leading coefficient, and what it determines is the width of this parabola. So it can be a kind of a fat parabola like this, or it can be a narrow one. Now this is also kind of an interesting equation because we can calculate what A is going to be, and it's rather simple. We divide both sides by the distance squared, so we get drop over distance squared equals A, which is this leading coefficient. Because we don't have to use 8 inches per mile squared, what if we want to use nautical miles or we want to use kilometers? Can we calculate A for nautical miles and kilometers as well? well Obviously, we can. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, right under the title conversions on this table, you'll see the number of degrees that we're talking about. So what I did was I went ahead and I looked at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 degrees. And then I converted that to miles, nautical miles, and kilometers. And then I compared it to the actual drop. I happened to put that in miles, but of course I converted it to kilometers and nautical miles as needed. And I came up with the conversion factors. Now you may notice that these are very tiny numbers. Why is that? And the answer to that is simpler than you may think. If your distances in drops are in miles, your leading coefficient needs to be in miles as well. And I'll tell you, there's not many miles in 8 inches. So I went ahead and converted them into user-friendly units. So for miles, it works out to 7.98 inches per mile squared. For nautical miles, it's 10.51 inches per nautical mile squared. And for kilometers, it's 7.8 centimeters per kilometer squared. So just to sum everything up, the actual trigonometry on calculating drop over a spherical Earth is actually quite simple. However, it's more useful for very long distances. For short distances, such as line of sight distances, it's more convenient to use 7.9 inches per mile squared or 10.51 inches per nautical mile squared or 7.8 centimeters per kilometer squared for distances that are within visual range. However, you can use those convenient figures out to over 4,000 kilometers without too much of a loss in precision. So this is Bob the Science Guy and this is the definitive video on 8 inches per mile squared. I'll go ahead and put a link to the PDF of my spreadsheet if you wish to review it on your own. And thank you for the support of my channel. Take care, guys.